Today we're gonna turn these strips into these lights on Timber Biscuit. So let's get started. So I'm gonna start out by cutting out my forms at the CNC. Now, if you don't have a CNC, don't worry, I'm gonna go over how you can make these forms without a CNC here in a second. Since I'm using three quarter inch material, I first need to cut out five templates for each of the three forms. I also thought it would be a good idea to go ahead and add in some clamping holes into the form so that glue ups would go a little easier. All right, so now these guys are off the CNC. They've got some pretty rough edges, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean them up and then we'll start gluing and sandwiching these together before we start on a medium sized one, which I'll do with using a router table. When I initially popped the templates out, they were looking a little rough. And that's mainly because I didn't have the depth of the bit set low enough on this first pass. But after I sanded them down, I could stack them up and glue them together. And I'm just using Type On 2 for this glue up, along with the brayer to spread out the glue. While I'm doing this, I check the edges to make sure they're pretty close. But they don't need to be perfect right now. And a couple of clamps squeeze the pieces together while the glue dries. From there, I could repeat the process for the interior curve. For this process, I find it best to only apply glue to one side. If you apply glue to both sides, the glue can get a little excessive and the pieces can slide a lot. All right, so earlier I mentioned I would show how to do this without a CNC. Basically what you're gonna wanna do is trace out your two paper templates for your interior and exterior curve onto your MDF, like I've shown in previous videos. Then you're gonna wanna cut them out with a jigsaw or bandsaw first and then clean them up with some sandpaper. Once you have that initial template done, you can just trace it out again and then just use a jigsaw or bandsaw to cut it out to its rough shape as I'm doing here. And don't worry, these pieces can be a little rough, kinda like my son's attitude come dinner time if it's not PB and J night. And just a heads up, all these templates are included in the plans, which are linked in the description below. For those of you with a CNC, the CNC files will be in there as well. Once you have that rough template cut out, just glue it directly to your original template. And here I'm using Quick and Thick to speed things along. While that dried, I started milling the hard maple for the veneers, which I'll use for the bent lamination. And just a side note, I did mill a lot more material than I actually needed, just to ensure I wouldn't have to go back and do this again if any of them failed. So with my boards jointed and plain, I took them over to the table saw to rip them down. And I left them slightly oversized so I could trim them to their final width later. And I honestly prefer using the eight quarter material just because it gives me a lot more room to work with. But for this project, I'm just trying to use what I had on hand. From there, it was over to the bandsaw to cut the veneer. Now I'm cutting these to 3 seconds of an inch so that I can sand them down with a drum sander later. To cut a veneer this thin, you're really going to want to make sure your bandsaw is tuned up. So be sure to check out my bandsaw tune-up video to see how you should tune yours. Once you have all that set up, just use consistent pressure and a consistent feed rate to ensure consistent cuts. Another option is to use a feather board, but I find that it gets in the way during this process. If you keep your fingers moving with good pressure, you should be able to cut these veneers just fine. Over the drum sander, I thickness the pieces down to a sixteenth of an inch. Now I get a lot of questions about this drum sander, and I'll just say that this is not my favorite tool in the shop, but it does work to be able to do small pieces like this, as long as I'm patient and willing to put the time in. And if you don't have a drum sander, you could always stick these guys to a sled and run them through the planer. Or another option is to just purchase the veneer pre-made. All right, so that took a little while. I've got 65 veneers total, which should be plenty for me to get all of the lights done. So let's get back to those templates so we can get these guys glued and clamped up. So by now the glue's had plenty of time to set up for our template and we can just use a flush trim bit at the router table to trim away the excess. This bit just chews right through the MDF, being that there's no end grain and it's super soft. And hey, if you're enjoying this video, please give it a like. It helps a ton and it lets the video spread to more people. So thank you very much. Once you're finished flush trimming your first template, you can go ahead and glue on the next one and follow the same process. You'll just have to raise it over the bit depending on your template placement for the cut. From there, my previously drilled holes act as a guide and I can just pop my Forstner bit in and continue through the template. And though I don't show it, I did drill out every single hole and I'll tell you that the process really didn't take that long. With my templates all flush trimmed, I could glue the sections together. And as I progressed through these glue sandwiches, I found that dumbbells were a lot easier than clamps. So once the MDF mayo was dry, I used my oscillating spindle sander to clean up the inside curves. And this just smooths out the MDF. Another option would be to use a dowel wrapped in some sandpaper. And the outside curve template cleaned up quickly with the random orbit. I was just careful not to stay in one place for too long, so I didn't flatten out the form. All right, so the molds at this point are pretty close. I just want to wrap the inside area with some cork. This way it'll give a little bit and it'll flex a little if there's any imperfections. So let's get these wrapped up and we'll get on to cutting some strips out and get them glued up. 
Now the cork I'm using here is adhesive backed cork, but if you don't have adhesive backed cork, you could always just use regular cork with some spray adhesive. But I'll leave a link to this stuff down in the description along with any other items I've used in the video. Next I'll wrap the forms with tuck tape where it would come in contact with the glue. Now tuck tape is just what I had on hand, but packing tape would work just fine. To make sure the bottom of the mold was flat, I attached a couple of scrap pieces of MDF using a couple screws. This way I could pop them out if I needed to remove the bottom to remove the bent lamination. From there it was time to cut the veneers to their final length. Now I used some painter's tape to hold my laminations together, as well as remove the risk of tear out. It's also important to mention that when you're cutting veneers for the inside and outside diameters of a circle, they're obviously going to be longer on the outside diameter than they are on the inside diameter or circumference. So you need to take that into account when you're cutting your veneer to length. And I like using my crosscut sled of the table saw, but a miter saw would also be an option. All right, so with all of my veneers cut the length, I can start gluing up the bent lamination. And for that, I'm gonna use Type-On to extend because it gives me a little bit more open time. Though I'm not sure that you really need it for this project, it's just a nice safety net. Plus I've had good results with it in the past and it's not as harsh as something like epoxy would be. Now there's a lot of different glues you could use for bent lamination. This is just my preferred glue and it's what I found works best. So the process is pretty straightforward, but you're gonna to wanna to test fit the strips before you do any of the glue ups. And then you're just gonna apply glue to one side, stack up your pieces, and then bend them into the form. The shorter veneers really wanted to jump out because the curve was so tight. So I did them one at a time, but on the larger molds, I could do two or even all five strips at a time. And if you're enjoying this project, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. So I let the laminations sit in the molds overnight, but the shortest I let them go was eight hours. And I'll tell you that because like Lieutenant Caffey, I think you can handle the truth. So as I mentioned earlier, I unscrewed the bottoms so that I could pop out the laminations, screwed them back on, and repeated the process. And if you're like me and you have a dusty shop, just do your best to avoid getting it in the glue as that can affect the lamination. Oh, and I forgot to mention that on this final strip here, I don't put any glue because the adjoining face already has glue applied. Because these forms were larger than 50% of the circumference of the circle, some of them were a little tough to squeeze in, but I was able to make it happen. So once I pop these guys out of the mold, they're a little oversized and wonky because the edges don't match up perfectly, but I'll take care of that here in a second. The main thing to look for here are any delaminations that are occurring already, in which case you may have to reform them. But everything here looks good, so let's move on. Prior to trimming these half circles at the table saw, I need to square off one end at the joiner. And to do that, I just pulled the guard back to expose the blade. So it goes without saying, I was being extremely careful when doing this step. From there, I could cut the laminations to their final thickness at the bandsaw, placing the jointed edge against the fence and rotating the pieces. Now, if you don't have a bandsaw or a joiner, you could always set up a sled and to chip away your edges until you have one clean edge. Then you would have to rotate the piece and repeat the process. But it's pieces like this where the bandsaw shines and why I think it's one of the most versatile tools in the shop. But that's between you, me, Alexa, and any other devices you have listening. Back at the table saw, I cut a clean edge on my sled and used a half circle template to trim off the edges of my bent lamination. This template allows me to hold the pieces in place while I run the sled against the fence, giving me clean lines on both sides of my circle. I also added a few blocks to pinch the workpiece in place and hold it to the form. I again added some blue tape around the edges to avoid tear out, because tear out right now would really suck. From there I made the initial cut, then rotated the piece, making sure to line it up as close as I could to the edge, and made the second pass. When removing the piece from the form, I had to be really careful not to snap off my off cuts and risk breaking the lamination. The blue painter's tape was also a great indicator to see if I was lined up for the second cut. And yes, this is another one of those situations where the blade is turned all the way up to 11. I should also know that each one of the circles is going to need its own sled setup, so just keep that in mind when you're planning out your sizes. From there I could repeat the process for the remaining circles. Not all the table saw cuts were perfect, so I used a chisel to clean those up. Just make sure to take light passes so you avoid tear out. And here I'm just parrying away so I don't take deep gouging cuts.
Before bringing the two half circles together, I set up a router bit to cut a rabbit into the top of the lights. This will hold the mounts that attach the light to the socket. While I could have done this after the two sides were glued together, I felt like it was better to do it now, so I could use the insert to assist with the glue up. I work on these videos and projects after work, and they take a lot of time away from my family and a lot of time away from my personal life. So if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by buying a set of plans or by joining my Patreon linked in the description below, where you'll get discount codes for plans, merch, and some other cool stuff. And for those of you who have already joined, thank you. Your support means the world. Back at the CNC, I made the mounts that would hold the light fixtures. And luckily these went easily, otherwise they may have been my Cad Bane. And then it was finally time for these lights to come together. So in an effort to make the glue up a little easier, I decided to glue all three pieces in at one time. Applying glue to the rabbit in both of my ingrain pieces, and then using some strap clamps to squeeze everything together. The good thing about doing it this way is that the insert allows for the rings to be perfectly circular, and gives it a little support for the clamping. And then as with all the other processes, I could repeat the steps four more times. Since I only have one set of strap clamps, I took the time in between glue ups to go ahead and sand the seams, which went pretty quickly with a random orbit sander, though I did have to hand sand the inside. And after a few hours, I finally had five lights that were ready for some metal. All right, so with the bent laminations all sanded to 180, I can go ahead and get started on the aluminum, which I'm gonna sand and then cut into strips. Let's put on the interior of the lamp and give us a pop of color, so let's get started on those. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to sand both sides of my aluminum sheets with 320 grit and then clean them off. From there I can mark out the width for my shades and then cut them out using some 10 snips. Due to the size of my lamps, I needed to buy three sheets of aluminum to make sure I had clean edges on all the exposed edges of the aluminum. Just something to keep in mind. From there I could use the interior of my wooden circle to create my metal circle. And then I added a couple of rivets to hold the aluminum in place. Here I really tried to make sure that the metal had a nice overlapping look, so I overlaid the aluminum by about an inch on the interior, which gave me plenty of room for the rivets. Once the rivets were in place, I had a nice friction fit for the aluminum. From there I could cut out strips for the medium and large size lights, which would need to be joined together for the larger circumference. For the medium size lights, I just added a small patch that would overlap, giving me a little bit more visual interest and making it look more intentional. It felt like a nice way to really embrace the rivets. With all the lights assembled, I could apply an etching primer to the aluminum before painting them their final colors. I went with a flat white spray paint for the smaller ones, but I used a matte interior enamel for the larger three, which worked out great. And if you don't have an HVLP spray gun, you could opt to roll these out, but this was just a smoother and faster way for me to go. With the aluminum painted, I went with the penetrating oil for the maple. All right, so now while these dry, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take down the old lights and we'll wire up the new ones so that we can get these guys installed. So I'll start with the disclaimer that I am not a certified electrician, I just know enough to get by. So if you're not comfortable doing this part on your own, definitely contact a professional. So I got all these sockets, wires, and lamp parts from a company called ColorCord, which I'll link down in the description because they're awesome for creating custom light fixtures. The assembly was pretty straightforward and they have great instructions on their website that you can follow along with. The one tip I will give is just to make sure that you leave yourself enough wire so you can actually wire these guys to your home. When it came to reinstalling the lights, that went really smoothly with a couple of connections and a couple of screws. From there I could reinstall my aluminum shades and these guys were ready to hang. And one of the great things about the mounts is they fit perfectly around the socket. And then it was finally time for that aha moment. I couldn't be happier with how these light fixtures turned out. They're a huge upgrade from my previous lights and they really modernized the space. The bent laminations turned out beautifully and that pop of color really makes the lights stand out. So if you enjoyed this build, subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Watch this video next and I'll see you next time.